We're back to the Neil Haley Show, and my guest today is, again, business strategist, author, and business owner, Gene Kuhn. Gene, thanks for stopping by, and you're the marketing guru, and you're going to teach us today the importance of email marketing. A lot of times, people are just focusing all their time on TikTok, on Instagram, on Facebook, and yet they don't have people they can communicate with each and every week who are really the valued people who understand them. Absolutely. And people right now, all they want, when they write an email, it's literally buy my stuff, right? Buy my stuff, buy my stuff, buy my stuff. And that is not the way to um, get your people to open up your emails. There's a few things that we need to do in order to have a great email, Neil. Uh, one of them is you have to have a great uh, subject line, right? My best subject line ever was titled, my husband left me, right? Oh, and God. so, and the second part, and I'm gonna tell you why that was funny in just a minute. The second part of the email is you should start with something personal, right? So I, it was a snowy Sunday afternoon and my husband and my sons went to a superhero movie, which I could care less about right? I couldn't care less about. And um, so I thought, I'm just going to write an email to my list. So I wrote the title was my husband left me. It was my biggest opening ever. They were probably wondering what took him so long. And uh, all he did was go to a movie. But I told a little bit of a story in there about that. And that's really that personal piece should be a story about what's going on in your life, right? Now, I wouldn't bring in, I wouldn't bring in drama. I wouldn't bring in anything bad that's happening. But it's when I start to write an email, I always stop and I think it's like, what story can I tie the lesson that I want to make to? So if you can make it a story, people will remember your stories long after they forget what your content was. That's so so true because the storytelling gives you that builds that relationship. You exactly. want to have a relationship with your list, right? Exactly. Uh, as a matter of fact, this is a really good example. When I had the chocolate stores, um, my daughter graduated college and she had worked in that store since she was 12 years old. And people knew her. All the our, our favorite customers knew her. And I wrote, I just put her in our newsletter that month in her cap and gown and how proud we were of her and, you know, come in and say hi to her before she, she um, starts her new job at the hospital. And People, I had a woman reach out to me from Tennessee and she said, thank you for sharing the story of your daughter. My daughter's in nursing school as well, but she had to take a semester off because she just had twin baby girls, but she'll be right back at it. And I, I'm so grateful that you shared that story about your daughter. I did not know her. My store was not in Tennessee. She at some point had come through my store because the only way you could get on my email list was if you signed up in the store. So it was really, and I called her and I, and we, we chatted for a few minutes, right? We connected mom to mom, right? And there's a lot of different ways you can connect with your people by telling stories. Maybe you've got a puppy, you've posted a picture of a new puppy. By the way, if you show me a picture of a new puppy, Neil, you and I are best friends forever, uh -huh. whether you want to be or not. So that's one way. Now, what happens if you're a cat person? Well, here's how you handle that, right? You get rid of the cat and you get a new puppy. And then we can connect again, right? So you, there's always, we'll connect over children, we'll connect over food, we'll connect over um, experiences, right? So I'm, when you write a story to start with a little personal story, you're right, it gives them an insight to who you are authentic, authentically and why they might want to connect with you. I love that because you're really making that connection off of opening the email to see the the subject matter. Okay, I'm going to check this out because I want I wonder what Gene has to say, and that's the beginning opener to get to capture that reader's attention, right? Mm -hmm. Exactly. But you you cannot listen. Your all of your headlines cannot be um, so staggeringly. That, you know, I call them Huff, Huffington Post headlines. They can't be Huffington Post or Inquirer headlines, right? You actually have to talk about what your headline is about, or you'll lose all credibility and nobody will open your th your email again. So um, number two, you have to put a little bit of education in there, right? A little bit of education. So I've actually given you two, so maybe there's five. Subject line, something personal, 
three is education. You've got to give them a little bit of education about what you do or the problem that you solve for people, right? So that's how I always tie my personal story into a business lesson. That number three is it has to be, you can include something else of interest for them in your newsletter. Um, when I was writing for the chocolate store, I would include a recipe. But now that I'm in, in the strategy business, I will include a video of the week. I will include something that I have, a training that I have coming up. I will include um, what might be, what extra trainings I might do or bringing people in to speak or whatever that is. I always have something in the subject line. I, I'm sorry, on the right-hand side of my newsletter, I always have something on the right-hand side of my newsletter that tells people what's up and coming, or here's something you might like, something that may interest you. And then number four is, or number five is a call to action, right? You have to have a call to action in your newsletter. What do you want them to do? Do you want them to click here? Do you want them to buy something? Do you just want them to download a new freebie that you might have, another lead generator that you might be offering? All of these are just different ways to get people on your list and share it with other people. You so might once, even say once, that. Once you, once you capture that reader's attention and you go right into the, uh, you know, the the education portion, is it you you try to come up with a theme for each email? Yeah, absolutely. I sometimes I will sit here for an hour or two till I come up with the right story, or I'll start writing it, and then I as I'm writing, I'm like, oh well, that. That personal story has nothing to do with the business lesson I want to teach. So I will literally erase it all and start over. And that business lesson is so important because they see your expertise and that's when they want to contact you, right? From exactly. And, and here's the other thing is, and I know you're a big fan of AI and a lot of people are really big fans of AI. I don't want AI writing anything that comes out of my, if it comes off my desktop, it's something I hand wrote with no help from AI, right? You know why? Because it's my, AI will never write like I write. AI will never tell funny stories like I like to put in my news, my newsletters. AI, um, yeah, I don't see me and AI getting along too well, right? I'm, a, I'm a, maybe a little control freak there that I don't want AI taking over my job. Well, then I'll have to show you because specifically what we can do is basically you can write your email the same way through AI and then AI will help you with the best call to action because what they are able to do is they know, understand specifically what people want humanly. You have to put your input into this. If you input output, if you don't yes. put any good input in, AI doesn't work for you at all. You'll get exactly. the you'll get the junk for sure. All right. So you talk about the education and is it right then the CTA after you give that business lesson? Is that when you jump to the CTA? Yeah, it is. Usually yeah, it's exactly when I do it. But the education can be anything from um, when I had the chocolate store, I'm using this as an example because it's such a, a good one. When I had the chocolate store and I had a downtown br brick and mortar business, one of the pieces was bringing people into town, right? In order to come to my store and the other stores around me. So I always made people aware of when is the art festival, the downtown art festival? When is the the carnival, when is the pet parade, whatever that is, right? I always made sure I was telling people what was going on in town, that they would want the Halloween walk, what they want to come to, what can they come down and experience here? I want to make sure that they at least know that. The other pieces um, for education now, I might put in, um, for what I do now, I might put in a good book to read. I might put in, um, or I might even copy two or three paragraphs from a book and put it in there as education. Hey, I just read this and I thought it was something you should know. And I'm sharing that with you right now, right? So it's always looking for some, giving them a ton of value, right? That's really what your newsletter should be full of is just value. And what happens because you do that on a regular basis, your email newsletter, what you get great responses and you get leads from it too, right? I do. And, and, uh, and I make sales from it sometimes, right? I will put something out there. I've got a training or I've got a workshop or I've got a three day event or whatever it is that I'm working on. I will put it out to my list. So, because I know that there are buyers on that list. So basically they're willing to fill out that contact form. They're willing to, because they're warm. People don't understand social media. They're not warm yet. They're not warm. 
they're 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 thinking about it, but they're not considering it. But once they subscribe to that email list, it's goldmine. And what are your best ways of getting email subscribers, Jean? Uh, one of the things I do when I'm out speaking, right? When I go out and I speak, as a matter of fact, I was out yesterday, I collected 16 new email addresses, right? I spoke to a group of 16 people. They all wanted my newsletter after I talked about how kind of cool it was, news to use for business owners. So by the way, if you want my news to use for business owners, make sure you sign up at genecoon.com. But um, but that's exactly what it is. It's like, I tell them stories while I'm speaking. And then I talk about what they need to be putting in their newsletter. And then mostly they want to see it, which I'm excited about. They want to see it. How am I doing it? Right. What am I writing about? That's the very best. Right. Being a model to them is the very best way I can sample them. All right. Best place against genecoon.com. Think about that email. If you're not doing email marketing, Gene's going to come get you because ultimately at the end of the day, if you want to convert people, you have to convert them when they're warm. If they're not warm, you're dreaming because they have to do too much. You have to give them that call to action. And in social media, they're not warm yet. You got to get them to your list. You got to get them in DMs or you're not going to find them. Appreciate it, Gene. Thanks for having me, Neil. All right. You're welcome. You're listening and watching The Neil Haley Show. And we'll be back in just a moment.